Okay, so this is a Casting Bones reading for Katie. Um, Katie, you wanted to know about why you are being led to working as a psychopomp, which is essentially someone who works with spirits. Often they help them cross over, um, but it is really just tapping into the gift of mediumship and whatever your clear gifts are, whether it's clairvoyance, being able to see, you know, clear audience, being able to hear, clear sentience, being able to feel, clear cognizance, <laughs> being able to know. It's really being called into this work and wondering why, just what it is that your guides are trying to get you to see and to understand. So here we go. So the overall, <clears throat> when I do my Casting Bones readings now, <clears throat> I choose a piece. I mean, the, the piece chooses it itself, which which um, whichever piece wants to be included as like the overall theme for the reading. And so the, the piece that wanted to be included is this, I can't tell if it's focusing or not, this um, butterfly wing. And this is definitely an energy of change, metamorphosis. That's what I keep hearing, metamorphosis. So it feels like this experience is, hmm, it's almost like your life is changing, like significantly. You are going through a major change. Like the person that you were before is not the person that you are meant to be, like to continue being moving forward. You'll have to let me know if that resonates, but it feels like you are going, like your old life was one way and then your life moving forward, like the the plan that you had always, like your soul had always laid out for you in this lifetime was a total change up. Going from black to white, from above to below, like, like, so the total opposite of total 180 is really what it feels like. And it's, it can be really uncomfortable to step into that for sure. So, okay, here are the different pieces I'm going to show you in just a minute. Let's see. These are all the different pieces that... Don't carry a different meaning in the reading. I will tell you in just a minute. As after they're cast, the different meanings of all of them. So there they are. And ideally, you know, the goal is to cast them. I try and cast them just kind of in, in the middle without any intention of where it is that they're going. But of course, they always kind of, it's the whole point, you know, spirit sends messages through and a lot of that has to do with the placement and where they end up on hmm, on the mat. Um, sorry, on the cloth. So this cloth is representative of your all of your reality, right? So your reality is the entire cloth. That's what you're creating. That's your life. And. So in the center here, it is essentially the can be viewed one of two ways. And I usually read it a little bit of like both ways during my readings. So the center is <clears throat> the it's the energy that is having the most impact on your life. It's the most important, the most influential energy in your life, the most important issues, et cetera. Um, and it can <clears throat> also be thought of as <clears throat> time. So things that are happening here, this is like immediate. This is like the right now. And like, as you move further out, it's like time gets a little bit more distant. Um, I generally, in this reading, I'm feeling that it, the inside going outwards and outwards going in is more for 
the importance of the energy. That is usually how I, I read it. Sometimes it can be either one, but I think in this reading, <clears throat> it's going to be more the important themes. So the first thing that I notice is that there's a fairly even spread. Um, I mean, I guess there's a little bit of negative space over here or here, but this is really a nice even spread, which tells me that um, it tells me that there is balance in your life, that you are If you're, if you're juggling a lot of things, if you have a lot on your plate, you're dealing with them pretty well. Um, there are some things, like right here in the middle, that seem to be taking precedence or are a little bit more, I don't know, in your face, I guess. But um, for the most part, it feels like things are moving and flowing fairly well and fairly easily. Um, of note is this piece here being right in the middle. This is the piece that's representative of you. And it is, I mean, right in the center of the cloth, which is pretty significant. It feels like things in your life are pretty balanced. I know I just said that, but especially now, considering that the you piece is right in the middle. It feels like you're orchestrating. It's like you're creating your reality in your life very intentionally from right in the middle of it. I mean, you don't have to always be right in the center of everything, anchoring things in in a balanced way and evenly, but it sure does help. And when you do that intentionally, when that is your goal, when you're in alignment and creating from a space of balance and intention, I mean, that's just, you know, like the... What I'm trying to say the gold standard for living life, you know. Um, the other pieces that are right here in the middle are this jawbone, so throat chakra speaking things, energy. This is a jeweled beetle wing, so this is representative of kind of like abundance. That is like pretty feminine things, those are like the things that women often, I mean. I'm just going to start listing stereotypical things, right? Like makeup and accessories, jewelry, skin care, massages, mani-pedis, things like that, right? Like the investments that, that Divine Feminine makes in herself that are allowing her to step into her power and like into her goddess energy, right? Like the unique things that you find yourself drawn to um, that differentiate you from other goddesses and stuff, right? Like all the goddesses are so unique and beautiful and powerful in their own ways, but they all have different ways that they are beautiful and powerful, right? And so I think that this is like a reminder. I, it feels like you're you're doing a good job of knowing yourself, of investing in yourself in ways that feel good to you and are in alignment with you rather than just kind of doing what society tells you you're supposed to do or falling in line like with a, a friend group or whatever you know if they're going to go do something and you're just not into it being able to say no thanks I don't want to do that I'm going to spend my time and my energy you know taking care of myself and a different way, a way that's more meaningful to me. That's really what that feels like. It feels very balanced. But I also think it's really, really, really important. And it feels like as you go through this metamorphosis, um, it's going to be really, really important for you to participate in these like self-care things that are really meaningful to you so that you can stay grounded, first of all, but also be anchoring in a reality that is yours your highest timeline that is unique to you and your energy and life you want to create not the life everyone else is wanting you to create so i don't know i don't know if that's been a struggle for you has that been a struggle in the past where you feel like you've kind of like gone along with the crowd and been agreeable and is that something you've worked on recently kind of feels like that's something for you to be proud of your ability to 
to unapologetically show up for yourself. Even if it means saying no to other people, we're totally allowed to say no to other people. But, you know, we're raised in a society where women are not supposed to ever say no. So we're supposed to be agreeable all the time. This piece right here, this little pink oyster, uh, little pink pearl, is actually a, it's an energy of something unseen. It's usually unseen by me. Usually when this piece pops up in a reading, it means that there's something that your guides or your higher self wants you to tap into. So this is a really important energy. It's coming up probably in your everyday life. It's either healed and balanced, or maybe it's like something that's like throwing you off and you're like, gosh, I don't know what to do with this. Like one thing, like this one triggering thing. Um, but it feels like it's like firmly in your shadow. You feel really lost about what to do with it. And this piece shows up in, in my readings. This is like something that you're being asked to like tap into your own guidance about. I'm usually blocked from seeing very much about whatever this is. But it feels like, I mean, I am getting some information about it. And that is that there is, it, it feels like an experience in your day-to-day -day life that keeps, it's like recurring. And I don't think it's like some huge crisis, but I think it's like nagging. It's just like annoying very frequently, whether it's like an ex relationship, right? Or like your parents are like, I don't know. They're just like having a hard time, like letting you go live your own life or whatever. And they call a lot or maybe you have like a friend from college or high school that you're like, oh my gosh, I've moved on and think about growing the relationship, but I don't know how to just end things because that's awkward. Like there's like something that very often is recurring for you that again, it's not a crisis, but it's just kind of nagging and annoying. And I think it's taken a lot of your energy. This feels like a theme, a topic, an issue that's asking to be looked at so that it can be released. And then like this can move out a bit, not take up so much of your energy, not be such a focal point, and then allow some of these other things to flow a little bit better or maybe even come in to be addressed and um, invested in, right? This piece here is representative of masculine energy. And <clears throat> it feels like, and it's funny enough, the masculine energy and the sex piece, it's a coin that says sex on it, um, are right next to each other. And it feels like you're doing a good job of like keeping them at bay. You're like, yeah, I just... I'm going to not get lost in these things. I'm going to not participate in old ways of being around these things anymore. It's like they're still present. They're still asking to be looked at. Like there are still opportunities, whether it's like a current <clears throat> partnership, whether it's like just dating in general, whether it's just sexuality in general. You're like, I see you. I know you exist, but I'm just, I'm just not into it right now. You can just stay out there. Feels like there's a really healthy boundary with that right now. This um, piece is representative. It, it's a chicken bone, and this is this is very much rebirth energy, like the life and death cycle. It's also discernment and tapping into gifts. It feels like feels like this is a piece that soon it's like the psychopomp energy right of like your guys are kind of pushing you towards tapping into your mediumship gifts and and working with these these beings these entities these energies that's what this feels like it's like still on the outskirts and it's fine it's no big deal it's like out here and like there's a few things to kind of work through and address and understand over here and then when you do that it's like that is going to give this an opportunity to fully come in for you to tap into and understand and work with but for now, it's just hanging out. It's like, I'm fine. I'm over here. I exist. I'm on the cloth. So <laughs> I'm happy with that for now. That's what that feels like. Um, this piece is representative of family and ancestors. This feels supportive. It feels like your ancestors are kind of, they're available for you to tap into if that would be helpful for you on your journey, especially with your psychopomp stuff. In fact, that may be that may be like a good practice to 
connect with energies that are, they feel a little bit closer, maybe a little bit easier to connect with, a little bit safer to connect with. So connecting with the ancestors in that way. Um, and whether you do that consciously or not, like they are still present and with you, helping you and guiding you, keeping you safe when you're, when you are tapping into like the quantum field and going to the astral, exploring things with these other energies and entities. And I feel like you have a lot of really strong, there's like, and it's equal parts masculine and feminine that are guiding you and keeping you safe. So it would be really helpful, I think, to tap into that energy. Um, let's see. These pieces here, these feel like more distant, like obviously not quite as prominent in your life right now energetically, but also like time-wise. It doesn't feel like these are going to come in anytime like not nearly as soon as this one is wanting to come in. It feels like as soon as you adjust things here just a bit, this one's going to come in. This is physical, anything related to your body. This is a missing piece, something that you needed, like the last piece for a puzzle, for example. This is the power and energy of the ocean, divine, divine feminine, divine mother energy and the ocean. Again, feels like... These are energies that are more distant to be addressed or incorporated, understood at some point in the future, but not necessarily very soon. Like you don't really have to even consider these all that much, think about them very much, invest your energy in them very much moving forward because um, they're just kind of chilling. <laughs> They just kind of exist and they're doing well energetically. You've kind of set up like a framework for them that like your physical body is doing pretty well. There's nothing, you know, missing piece energy. It feels like there just isn't a missing piece right now. And then ocean and like using that like water as a tool and tapping into divine feminine it just feels like it's there if you need it or want it. But you don't really need to address anything with it right now if you don't want to. So these pieces are, this is the energy of a helper. And it's it's often, it's like kind of like icky, right? Like, I don't know, I kind of, it's like a little rodent paw. It's very much helper energy, but like help that you don't really want to accept or that you didn't even realize could be help, could be helpful, right? Like an annoying younger sibling or something, right? Like, I don't know, they, they always want to hang out. They always want to do this. They always want to do that. And for the longest time, it felt like, work in emotional labor and you're like oh my god leave me alone i have stuff to do but reframing that situation will help you to see how it's, it actually is really helpful like the container the vehicle for the help might annoy you <laughs> which by the way would perhaps be an opportunity for some shadow work but there it feels like this is it oftentimes like i said reluctant helper like somewhere you don't really even think it's going to be helpful or is offering help Again, it doesn't feel super prominent, but just like, especially in your journey of like spirituality and tapping in mediumship, um, clairvoyance, like allowing these things to exist in your life. Being aware that sometimes there are those that can help that at first glance, they don't seem very helpful or you're like, you just don't even regard them as a possible help. Does that make sense? This feels directly related to connecting with spirits and helping them cross over, tapping into your mediumship abilities, et cetera. This piece is representative of foundation. It's like everything connects to here. This is like the structure provided. And I'm trying to understand and discern what role that plays on your journey. What I'm getting is that the foundation that this is speaking of, that's so important that you're going to be building your spiritual life, your spiritual career, whatever, however you, you know, whatever path you take with it, what you're building that on is the basic structure and foundation of your like everyday 3D life, right? So like, are you getting adequate sleep? Do you drink enough water? Are you taking care of your yourself, like physically, mentally, emotionally? What about the company you keep? What are your friends like? A partner, family that you interact with? 
regularly? Your space, is it clean and tidy? Is the energy good? Just like foundational stuff like that. And so if this has a weak link or it's like kind of crappy, then your spiritual practice will also be crappy. Does that make sense? You really got to make sure that like the everyday routines and things of that nature are solid. And then this piece here is representative of past life energy. Again, that's, that's pretty far out. It doesn't feel super important right now, but that's just like the influence of past lives on your current incarnation or the, the issue that we're talking about in this reading, which is tapping into your gifts, clairvoyance, um, being a psychopomp, being a medium, helping people cross over, et cetera. Um, it doesn't feel very significant or important right now to necessarily be diving into all of your past lives or understanding, you know, oh my gosh, what were my, my past lives as a witch or a healer or a voodoo black magic practitioner or whatever. Um, those things can be super fun to learn about, but it doesn't feel very important or relevant to your journey right now. Like it wouldn't necessarily be a very good use of your energy to be like past life meditations, past life regression, do all the things. Um, and of course, past life regression, as I say that, I I know better than most that a past life regression is often just connecting with divine guidance. Um, and so there can be value in seeking out certain types of um, experiences and activities, even if it doesn't provide you with the upfront, you know, energy that it's, I don't know, marketed as or that it's coming up as. A lot of past life is, is just healing. Um, a lot of a past life regression is just tapping into your guidance and your higher self. Your spirit guides, a lot of people just get guidance about their current lifetime. Some people don't even get out of their current lifetime during their past life regression. So anyway, it's kind of a side note, but you, it doesn't seem like you need to be like stressed out or worried about past life stuff at this point. Feels like there's been a lot of lifetimes, especially as a practitioner, a healer, right? But you don't really need to be worried about that right now. This out here is your like divine feminine, like magic. Your divine feminine energy and power. And I, she's like way over there off the cloth. And that does feel important. It really feels like she's kind of far away. It, it honestly feels like, and there's nothing, you're not like doing anything wrong or like, oh my gosh, you got to heal all these things before you can access your power and your magic. It just feels like the way that you've set up things in this lifetime, all of these things are going to be addressed and come into play and be very important first. And once you've worked through a, these different like energies over the next, it feels like year or two, you're really going to be stepping into your power as a healer, as a creator, as someone who is here to help and guide others. But there's nothing, it's not like this is out here because you have so much to move through. You're supposed to be healing all of this and you've blocked yourself off or anything like that. It just, that's just, that was always the way that your path was meant to go in this lifetime. And she's just there waiting. She's just there waiting for whenever you're ready. It's really what that energy feels like. So I'm hoping that this resonated. I'm hoping that this made sense. Um, feel free to reach out with any questions. And thank you so much for ordering a reading. It's such a blessing to me when people order readings or get sessions or purchase my courses. This is how I support myself and my family. So thank you so very much. I really appreciate it.